and I bombed and my dad was there watching. It was a terrible feeling. After eating it, and you know that awful feeling of walking through the crowd and they're oh, all looking yeah. at you like, Jesus, dude. Adam Sandler, the quintessential slapstick comedy genius of our time, has this remarkable story about how he basically willed himself into success. His early career confidence is nothing short of legendary, and let's be real, a little bit nuts. But that's the kind of delusion that turns a nobody into a household name. Sandler, in all his youthful cockiness, told his high school buddies he was going to make it big, and after having the guts to say it out loud to his friends, he practically dared himself to follow through. He wasn't just confident, he was delusionally confident, and in a way, that was his superpower. And then there's the days or nights you go on stage and you're shit, you're not doing good, you're eating it, but you have a confidence and you're like, I'm pretty good at this, even though I'm fucking eating it. You see, Sandler didn't just talk the talk. He strutted down the metaphorical runway of his early career with a swagger that was borderline absurd. Bombing at stand-up gigs, no biggie. He'd call his buddies and spin the story so hard it turned into gold. And when I would check in with him, I remember being on pay phones, calling after even eating it. I call him up, fucking did good tonight, Bob. Like, yeah, I go, yeah. I said, this joke fucking killed. Meanwhile, I fucking ate it. But here's the kicker, he believed it. I've eaten it before, but still felt I did good because I fucking remained kind of confident right. and, and believing in my shit still. This was a young guy with an oversized afro, totally clueless and just delusional enough to believe he was destined for greatness. And thank God for that delusion. Because while most people would crumble after bombing in front of someone like Robin Williams, he turned every failure into a stepping stone, which is wild because, let's face it, most of us would just quit. Robin Williams said I was fantastic. Robin Williams, I remember one night saw me eat it, and I was just like, oh man, I ate it in front of Robin Williams. But I changed the story of like, yeah, he liked that shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's like he had this internal pep talk on repeat. They just don't get it yet, but they will. Sandler's early years were a masterclass in faking it until you make it, except he wasn't really faking it. He was manifesting it. The line between delusion and confidence is razor thin, but Sandler danced on that line like it was the most natural thing in the world. There's something that could be very valuable about being delusional and being young. <laughs> yes, very delusional, so stupid, man. This brand of confidence didn't just help him survive, it helped him thrive. Think about it, if he had any doubt, would he have stuck with the ridiculous premises of Billy Madison or Happy Gilmore? Probably not. But Sandler was all in, 100%. And that commitment to being as goofy and out there as he wanted paid off. Critics be damned, the audiences loved him, and that's all that mattered. I think I was a cocky f who was like, yeah, baby, they figured it out. But I literally <laughs> didn't shit growing up. I, I auditioned for shit and never got, nobody liked me. Sandler's story is proof that if you believe in yourself hard enough, long enough, you can turn even the wildest dreams into reality. They would use words to kind of be gentle with me, but just say, you're not, you're not ready yet. And soon after enough persistence, along with that unwavering attitude, Sandler found himself being cast on the world-renowned Saturday Night Live. I was 23. That's as cool as it gets. All of a sudden, it became like you were in a rock band. With a group of elite A-list comics that would propel his career and already strong sense of confidence, into a whole other realm. Because Farley got on and Rock and Spade and, and we would walk down the street and Schneider and we were just always together. So there, there was this crazy band confidence. Confidence, bordering on delusion, can be the difference between living your dream or watching it from the sidelines. You've gotta be a little bit crazy, a little bit cocky, and a whole lot of committed to pull off what Sandler did. It's not about having all the answers from day one. It's about believing in yourself so fiercely that you just have to make it work even when everything else is telling you you're out of your mind. Because sometimes, the only person who really needs to believe in you is you. And as Sandler himself has shown, sometimes it's the sheer force of that belief that can turn a class clown into one of the most beloved comedians and actors of a generation.